I have a brand new tub of super white lithium grease. It's a NLGI number two that I'm using to see how this works compared to another oil. So the first thing I'm going to start doing is assembling the the worm section. Just a little bit of the light grease. It's going to come out of this. I realize that this is okay. Light coating here. And then on this surface. And this goes back into here. This slot aligns with a set of screws on the side over here to control as the screw engages and disengages with the worm, with the worm gear. The next piece is this ring. It has some adjustments on the back that I've preset to keep it pulled off the front. And also, um, only three of the holes align from the manufacturer. I'm not particularly sure why that is the case. But they definitely left the last screw out, so it was only three. This is tightened up. And this has no discernible play in it. Let's go ahead and set the screw that holds the depth. We just want it engaged so that I can. So I don't know if you can see it, but as I'm turning this, it's rotating it further back on the eccentric. And of course, the other way rotates it further into the worm wheel. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and get this bearing lubricated. I'm not shooting for a packing, just a general amount of, uh, of lubrication on it. I'm going to go ahead and cover the race as well, or the outer race, so that it doesn't get um, rusted inside. And then also the inner race. And then now to go ahead and do the worm. The worm gear or wheel. All the excess is going to come out. And then what I want to do is I want to lightly coat the mating surface. This is an oil friendly grease. So as I pump oil into it, it's a light oil, probably way lube. It's going to allow this grease to come right on out. And now to marriage these two together. It's a little sticky, that's okay. Now the Thrust bearing and its washer set. I might be putting too much of this in, but it's not a high speed application whatsoever. You can't get it going on crooked over those threads. There we go. And this is the nut. I need to be careful when I tighten this up. I don't really have a way to keep it from so I want to have a little bit of load but not much and as I tighten the part that distorts the threads it feels tight but it doesn't feel too tight let's carry on with the rest of this so we have the two locks 
One goes on each side. And then they each have one of these to tighten them up. Tight and loose. And then I have a small, very, very small piece of rubber on the end of my finger that I'm going to drop into this hole. I'd love to have a piece of brass to put in there. I'll take care of that later. It's so that this screw doesn't directly contact the end of the cast iron inside of there. And this is for locking in the, the drive mechanism. Or the, it locks the eccentric in. Yeah, I can feel it tightening up and then my hands are too slippery. That's nice. Now there's this piece, and this is the piece that I had to I, I had to grind the angle here for. As in this piece wants to pull, was wanting to pull away as I tightened it up. So I'm going to fully engage it. Put this on so that my gauge reads up. So in the engaged position, I am up with this. And then when I tighten these up, they should stay against that face. Versus what they were doing before, which was pulling away. And one more on the bottom. Still wanting to pull away a little bit. And then the lock collar to pull out any kind of backlash or not necessarily backlash, but to keep the worm from wanting to pull forward. And then the keyway, or the key into the keyway. I don't have the index plates for this. I might be able to find some, I, I don't know. This thing only like going in one way. And then the handle. And it's screw. Both of these are unlocked. Right now the it feels tight. Which is okay. And then if I engage it, it gets really tight. Let's see if I can't set that preload on the gun it's too far in and then I'm going to set this screw so that it backs off just a little bit it's hard to turn um, I don't have a handle but I have a, a bolt that I can use I think I might be too tight where the screw's at. Let me loosen that up just a little bit. Still tight. But it's got really good motion. And that's, that may be the best I can get out of the fact that it had been dropped. You can almost see the, 
difference here and how that opens and closes on that gap. Maybe that's something I can fix right now. It's not quite there, but I can adjust this now. To where that's about as close as it's going to be. Let's uh, let's back off a little bit more on this. That feels a lot better. It's going to be hard to turn for a while. I think this is a successful restoration. It's operational now. Might not be perfect, but I'm very happy with it. I think it'll work lovely. I went ahead and backed off all the tension points one more time. Uh, disconnected screw or disconnected worm. If I connect it. It's still not perfect, but I believe that's pretty good for what I'm looking at. At least until I understand and learn where the actual issue is. But I've never had one of these before, so this may just be the way that they work. I don't know. What have I got here? Uh, yeah. I'm excited. Thank you.